and answering questions based on probability trees. Let's look at the example. In bag A, there are five red counters and four blue counters. In bag B, there are four red counters and six blue counters. One counter is taken at random from bag A. One counter is taken at random from bag B. Complete the tree diagram. So for bag A, this is bag A. The first pick is going to be bag A. And there are five red and four blue. So if there are five red counters and four blue counters, what's the probability of getting a red? So the probability is five out of nine. Five out of nine counters are red. And the probability of getting a blue is going to be four ninths. Four out of nine are blue. So that's bag A. In bag B, there are four red counters and six blue counters. So what's the probability of getting a red counter? Four out of ten. Four out of ten red. And it's going to be four out of ten regardless of what we got in bag A. That's not going to make a difference. So both of these two here are going to be the same. The probability of getting a blue from bag B is 6 out of 10. And again, that's the same regardless of what we picked out of bag A. What we picked out of bag A does not affect what we pick out of bag B. So that is our tree diagram completed. Now to answer the questions, if we wanted the probability of red then red, we would multiply these two probabilities. So the probability of red then red is 5 ninths times 4 tenths. To multiply fractions, we can times the top and times the bottom. So the probability of red then red is 5 times 4, which is 20, out of 9 times 10, which is 90. The probability of red in bag A then blue in bag B is 5 times 6, so 30 out of 90. The probability of blue then red, blue in A, red in B, is 4 times 4, which is 16 out of 90. And the probability of blue then blue is 4 times 6, which is 24 out of 90. So these are all the different possible options. And if we added them up, we will see that they add up to one whole. Everything that can possibly happen has to add up to one whole. So what was the question? Find the probability that one counter of each colour is taken. So it's either red then blue or blue then red. So it's 30 out of 90 plus 16 out of 90. So it's going to be 46 out of 90. We don't have to simplify it unless we're asked to. So with probability, we don't have to simplify unless we're asked to. So I'm going to leave it like that. 46 out of 90. Okay, here's one for you to try. So complete the tree diagram and find the probability that both counters are red. So for bag A, there are three red and seven blue. So the probability of getting a red is three tenths. There are 10 counts in total, three are red. The probability of blue is seven tenths. In bag B, there are five red and six blue. So there are five red out of 11 in total. So the probability of getting a red in bag B is five elevenths. And the probability of getting a blue in bag B there are six blues out of 11 in total, so that's six elevenths. So then we work out the probabilities by multiplying across. So red then red is three tenths times five elevenths, which is 15 over 110. So that's the answer to our question. The probability that both counts are red is 15 out of 110. We don't have to simplify it, 
So that is our answer. Here we have another question. This one says the probability of a train, the probability that a train is late on any day is 0.1. Complete the tree diagram for Monday and Tuesday. So if the probability of it being late is 0.1, the probability of it not being late is 0.9. The probability of late and not late have to add up to 1. All probabilities add up to 1. So 0.1 and 0.9 make one whole. So the probability of it not being late is 0.9. And that's the same on every day. So on Tuesday, the probability of it being late is 0.1. And the probability of it being not late is 0.9. So let's look at the question. Find the probability that the train is late on at least one of the days. So there's two ways of doing this. We could find the probability of it being not late on both days, and then do one minus the answer. Or find the probability of late, 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 not late, and not late, late, and add them together. It doesn't matter which one we do. So I'm going to work out all of the probabilities. So 0.1 times 0.1 is the probability of it being late both days. So one times one is one, and we want two numbers after the decimal point in the answer, because there were two numbers after the decimal point in the question. So that'd be 0.01. The probability of late on Monday and not late on Tuesday is 0 0.1 times 0 0.9, which is gonna be 0 0.09. So one nine is nine, and we want two numbers after decimal place in the answer. And again, Monday not late, Tuesday late is 0 0.9 times 0 0.1, which is 0 0.09. And not late on both days, so nine nines are 81. We want two numbers after decimal point, so it's 0 0.81. And if we added all these up, we will get one whole. So the probability that it's late on at least one day is 0 0.01 plus 0 0.09 plus 0 0.09, which is 0 0.19. 0 0.01 and 0 0.09 make 0 0.1 plus 0 0.09 makes 0 0.19. We could have also done 1 minus 0 0.81. We would have got the same answer. Okay, one of these for you to try. So the same question, complete the tree diagram, and then the question says, find the probability the bus is late on both days. So the chance of the bus being late on any day is 0 0.3. So the chance of being not late, what's left, what do we have to add on to 0 0.3 to make a hole? That's 0 0.7. So on every day, the probability of it being late is 0 0.3. So the probability of it being not late is 0 0.7. So the probability it's late on both days is 0 0.3 times 0 0.3. Three threes are nine. And we've got two numbers after the decimal point in the question. So we want two numbers after the decimal point in the answer. So 0 0.3 times 0 0.3 is 0 0.09. If you don't like decimals, we could have changed these into fractions and done three tenths times three tenths and got nine one hundredths. It's the same thing. And one more question. So pause the video, give this a go and press play when you're ready for the answer. So Roger 
is going to play one tennis match and one badminton match. The probability wins the tennis match is three quarters. So winning tennis is three quarters. So losing tennis must be one quarter. Winning and losing have to add up to a whole. The probability he wins badminton is one third. So the probability he loses must be two thirds. Winning and losing have to add up to a whole. Everything that can happen must equal one whole. So that's the tree diagram completed. Find the probability he wins both matches. So win then win is three quarters times one third. So times the top times the bottom. So that's three twelfths. We could simplify it to one quarter, but we don't have to simplify it unless we're asked to. So I'm going to leave it as three twelfths. Find the probability that Roger wins one match and loses the other. So it's either win-lose, so three quarters times two thirds is six twelfths of one half, and lose then win is one quarter times one third, one one is one, four threes are twelve, so we've got six twelfths plus one twelfth, which is seven twelfths. And if we work out all the probabilities, we will find that they add up to one whole. 3 plus 6 is 9, plus 1 is 10, plus 2 is 12. So everything adds up to 12 out of 12. Everything adds up to one whole.